Okay, let's talk about the Alex math placement exam. And really, it's an assessment, uh, not really an exam where you pass or fail, but it's a placement exam or placement assessment, excuse me. Uh, and if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you're going to be taking the Alex, which means that you're probably a first year college student. So congratulations and, um, you know, on going to school. So that's always exciting. But with that being said, one thing that you want to do is do the best you can on any placement um, assessment. Okay, and the Alex is a really good one for math because it's going to be measuring how many math skills you you know know. And the math skills that we're really talking about here is high school level math, lots of algebra, lots of geometry, more advanced top uh, topics in math. So just because it says high school level math, high school level math is is uh, you know is, is pretty. There's, there's a lot of mathematics there, okay? So my background is I'm a middle school uh, middle school math teacher, high school math teacher, even taught some college. So I've been teaching math for many, many years. So I want to pass on to you some um, you know, good information for you to uh, prepare for the Alex. So before we get going, I want to let you know that I actually have an Alex math uh, test prep course. I'm going to leave the link in the description of this video if that might uh, interest you. Um, but with that being said, I also want to encourage you to to really study as hard as you can uh, for the Alex. And don't assume just because you took all these courses in high school, let's say you took pre-calculus and you were good in math, that you don't have to study. You know, you, so particularly if you did well in, in high school math, you definitely want to study the hardest because that really, you know, uh, it's going to put you at the highest advantage to place at the highest level you can in terms of going into college. And you want to place into the highest level uh, in in, in school because this is gonna if you if you inadvertently place at a level that's kind of lower than your potential you, then you got to spend time and money okay to kind of like do something that yeah you know you already kind of know and then you kind of like move up and you know you don't want to you want to look at your time you know it's even more valuable than money okay it's just like and, and time is money <laughs> if you will so just take it serious and and really you know, uh, do the best you can on on the Alex uh, assessment. So, with that being said, I got a little pop quiz problem here. It's certainly by no means, uh, you know, it's only one problem of one component, but it's just something definitely you should be able to know in terms of the Alex uh, uh, math assessment. So here I have a function, and what I want you to do is to tell me the domain of this function. So that's I'm I'm going to obviously answer this and speak to it, but. It, hopefully you understand the nature of my question. So I'm going to repeat it and then if you want to try it, you may want to pause the video before I actually go through the solution. So I have a function. I'd like you to tell me the domain. Okay, so what's the domain of this function? Okay, so go ahead and try it if you think you can uh, solve it. Alright, so let me uh, get into it now. Now functions are a huge, huge uh, part of mathematics so this is not going to turn into a full lesson on functions but I am going to re just review some real basic basic things with you here uh, so I can answer this question so here we have a function now this X part is where we input values into the function so for example I can evaluate this function for a specific uh, value okay so for example I can find what f of 2 is and I would plug in 2, I would replace the x values, right, with this 2. So it would be 3, well, let's do it over here and give ourselves some room. So f of 2 would be 3 times 2 over 2 squared minus 1. So let's just simplify this. 3 times 2 is 6. 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. So it turns out that f of 2 is equal to 2. Now, this x here is our input value, and this part, so this is what we, this 2 was our input, and what we got with the, was this other 2 as an output, okay? And this 2 here, this input value was our x, so we kind of think of this as an xy point on uh, the uh, Cartesian plane, okay? So this is our input, and our y was our output. 
So 2, 2, okay, was is a point that we can actually plot on a graph for this particular function. So if I wanted to graph this function, I can just plug in a lot of different uh, values and then just kind of construct a graph kind of like by connecting the dots. Now, the input and output, we have specific names uh, for them uh, in the function world, okay? Our input is called the domain and the output is called the range. Now, the domain is actually a little bit more specific. The domain is like, okay, well, it's just the input values we can plug into a function. Well, it's a little bit more than that, okay? The domain is the idea of what numbers are we allowed to plug into this function. So you're like, well, what do you mean by that? Well, your every function, we have to kind of like know what we're allowed to plug into into this particular uh, function because they may there there may be some values that if we plug into uh, this function it might blow the function up. In other words, they're not allowed. So you're like saying, what is it? <laughs> that? Doesn't make sense. What you know, blow up the function? What are you talking about? Well, when we're talking about the real number set, there's a couple of things that we don't want to happen. Uh, we don't want to be able to put a value into a function such that we end up with a couple different scenarios. One of those scenarios is getting a zero in the denominator. Okay, So if we plug something in and we end up with a zero down in the denominator as our final answer by whatever that input value caused a zero, that value we have to throw it out. We're like, okay, we can't use that because this is a bad situation in math. Okay? Another scenario that you don't want to happen is where you end up with a negative value underneath a uh, square root. Okay. Now this is when we're talking about the set of real numbers. Again, this is a huge, uh, you know, topic in in mathematics. But generally speaking, for for the purposes of Alex, um, you don't want to um, have any. Or you, we're going to have to restrict any values that cause a negative value. Uh, a total negative value underneath the square root or zero in a denominator. So we have any of those values, okay, we have to find them and get them out of the domain, okay? Anything else, any any other value that we can plug in and doesn't cause these scenarios can be allowed to remain in our input values, which we call the domain, okay? So the domain is the set of all allowable, okay, uh, allowable input values. It's kind of one way to think of it. So in this scenario, we have a fraction, right? So we're mostly concerned with the denominator being zero. So you're saying, okay, x squared minus one. One way to figure out what values of x would make this zero is just to solve this basic equation. Say, okay, x squared minus one, when are you actually gonna be equal to zero? So this is a little pop quiz right here for you. Let's see if you can solve this. You might wanna pause the video and solve this basic equation. All right, so hopefully you said, okay, that's x squared is equal to one. This is one approach to it, but you've got to recognize that this is a quadratic equation and there's this is gonna have two solutions. So we can take the square root of both sides. So x is equal to the positive negative value of the square root of one, which is of course just one. So x is equal to positive and negative one. Now, one way you could do this as well is you can solve this by factoring. Go x plus one x minus 1 is equal to 0. Okay, the difference of two squares, and you could solve it that way. But you should realize that the solution to this equation is uh, x is equal to positive 1 and negative 1. Okay, so therefore, if we plugged in a 1 or a negative 1 into this function, you can see what's going to happen down here, right? We're going to have 1 squared or negative 1 squared. Either way, it's going to become 1, right? 1 minus 1 is 0. So that's the, that's bad, right? We don't want a zero in the denominator. So these two guys have to be restricted from our, our domain. Now, there's lots of different ways you can express a domain, but in this case, you could just say something as simple as this. So the domain is all uh, this set of all real numbers, okay, except x cannot be equal to positive and negative one. There's lots of different ways. Well, not lots and lots of different ways, but there's a few different ways that we it can express uh, the domain and range. Okay, there's also interval notation, which you want to know as well. But generally speaking, if you were able to get this right and you understood why, you know, you understood my explanations, you followed, then that's that's pretty good. Okay, so again, 
Alex Mathematics is a is a compilation of a lot of high school level math. Okay, and functions is critical. And this is just kind of a, a basic level problem. Okay, can you can make these problems much more sophisticated? But you definitely got to know functions to do well on the Alex. So let's go ahead and wrap this video up. So again, if you like my teaching style and you're preparing for the Alex, then I'll leave the link to my Alex uh, test prep uh, course in the description of this video. Also, I literally have hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel that could definitely uh, help you out uh, when you're studying for the Alex. If you um, like this video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And leave me some feedback. Um, were you given the option uh, to take the Alex only or the Alex? And there's other tests out there like the AccuPlacer. There was, and there's even a few probably uh, other um, assessments. But it's just, you know, I kind of like to know from you, you know, what's kind of going on there. It seems to me that at the Alex is really widely used. So a lot of people out there are taking It's a great, it, for, for good reasons, it's, it's an excellent assessment. But any feedback would definitely appreciate be appreciated. Again, if you uh, walk away from this video with one thing, the, that main thing is this, study for this assessment, okay? Do yourself the favor of just doing the best you can. You know, not, it's not gonna be perfect because you you got other assessments going on probably you got a lot of other things that are competing for your time but try to put in a good a good level of effort do the best you can on the Alex and hopefully you know my videos and my course can help you out but with that being said I wish you all the best thank you for your time and have a great day